Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a red-black sacrifice deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, built around Hidetsugu, Devouring Chaos, a 4-mana 4-4 legendary Ogre Demon from Kamigawa, can pay a black mana and sacrifice a creature to scry 2, and we can pay 2 in a red and tap Hidetsugu to exile the top card of our library, and then we can play that card this turn, and if we exile a non-land card that way, Hidetsugu deals damage equal to the exiled card's mana value to any target, so the first ability can potentially set up the second ability, so we can provide a nice bit of card advantage and potentially damage as well. Now our deck is mostly built to leverage the first ability, as opposed to really comboing with the second ability by including a lot of expensive cards, I think that's better suited for different formats where you have more tutor effects to set that up, but if you wanted to build more in that direction, I can recommend cards like Varagoth to potentially tutor a card and put it on top of your deck. Now I've split up the deck into a few different categories, starting with the largest one, which is Sacrifice Fodder. These are creatures that we can often sacrifice repeatedly to provide a bit of value. Set one mana, there's a Cursebound Witch, a 1-2 that when it dies lets us draft a card from its 15-card spellbook, which are all Witch and Sacrifice-themed cards. We've got a Nested Shambler, a 1-1 leaves behind Squirrel Tokens when it dies. Persistent Specimen we can return from our graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Serrated Scorpion drains the opponent for two. Shambling Gas can either make a treasure or give a creature minus one minus one. Grim Initiate lets us amass one, leaving behind a 1-1 one -one zombie army token. We've got Hobbling Zombie, adjusted in alchemy, now two mana for a 2-2 with Death Touch, that when it dies makes a decayed zombie token. Carrier Thrall leaves behind an Eldrazi Scion when it dies, which can be sacrificed to add colorless mana. We've got Clattering Augur, when it enters it draws a card at the cost of one life, and we can also return it from our graveyard to our hand to potentially replay it. Doomed Dissenter leaves behind a 2-2 zombie token when it dies, Dusk Legion Zealot draws a card at the cost of one life, Jadar repeatedly makes 2-2 decayed zombie tokens, Lazotep Reaver is joined by a 1-1 zombie army token when it enters, Novus Occultist draws a card at the cost of one life when it dies, We've got Reassembling Skeleton that we can repeatedly get back from our graveyard on the battlefield tapped for one and a black. Karizaf attacks alongside Ragavan, a 2-1 monkey token that we have to exile at the end of combat, but we can maybe sacrifice it before it goes away for value. Then Kroxa will make the opponent discard when it enters, and then we have to sacrifice Kroxa afterwards, unless it escaped, but we can also potentially sacrifice Kroxa and still get the value for making the opponent discard, and then maybe get some other benefit in the meantime, and then later we can also escape it out of the graveyard, exiling some cards to get the powerful 6-6 Elder Giant. Then Solemn will ramp us when it enters, finding a basic land and draws a card when it dies. And we've got Boneyard Aberration, another alchemy card that when it dies lets us conjure three copies of a reassembling skeleton into our graveyard that we can then also get back. Then the next category are Sacrifice Outlets, additional ways besides Hidetsugu to potentially sacrifice our creatures for value, starting out with Ecstatic Awakener, which can pay 2 and a black and sacrifice a creature to draw a card and then transform into a 4-4 creature. Village Rides can sack a creature for 1 mana at instant speed to draw 2. We've got Deadly Dispute, which does the same and also makes a treasure token. The Soul Ripper from Kamigawa can sacrifice creatures and artifacts to pick up plus one counters and menace until end of turn, and then will stick around as a vehicle to potentially dodge sorcery speed sweepers. We've got Priest of Forgotten Gods, which requires two sacrificial creatures. To make the opponent sacrifice a creature, we get to draw a card and double black to our mana pool and make the opponent lose two life. Skullport Merchant gets a treasure token when it enters, can also pay one on a black to sacrifice creatures or treasures to draw cards. Woe Strider is one of the better sacrifice outlets, as it doesn't cost any mana to activate it, and then also lets us scry one, so a slightly weaker version of Hidetsugu, but we don't have to pay any mana for it. And then we can also escape it out of the graveyard later, and is also joined by an 0-1 goat token. We've got Yaheni, which can also sacrifice creatures for free to make her indestructible until end of turn, potentially picks up plus one counters if opposing creatures die. Henrika has a few different abilities, and one of them involves making each player sacrifice a creature. 
We've got a Rankle, which can also hit the opponent and then make each player sacrifice a creature. Has a few other useful abilities as well. Yogmoth can also sacrifice creatures for free to put a minus one minus one counter on up to one target creature and we get to draw a card so it can potentially activate it multiple times in the same turn. And finally Immerstorm Predator, a 3-3 flyer that can sacrifice another creature to give it indestructible until end of turn. We also tap it and when the Predator becomes tapped either by attacking or using the ability we get to exile up to one target card from a graveyard and separate from exiling any cards also picks up a plus one plus one counter. Then the next category is removal, and we also have a few removal spells that can also act as sacrifice outlets, namely Bone Shards, which either makes us sacrifice a creature or discard a card as an additional cost to destroy a creature or planeswalker, and Spark Harvest does a similar thing, and we can also pay 5 mana total so we don't have to sacrifice anything. Then we've got Lightning Bolt, and Feed the Swarm as just efficient removal spells, Feed the Swarm one of the few answers to enchantments in Red Black. Then the next category are payoffs for sacrificing creatures, starting with Blood Artist, which will drain the opponent for one whenever any creature dies, including the opponent's creatures. Bastion will drain the opponent if our creatures die, is an enchantment so a bit more difficult for them to interact with, and is also joined by a 1-1 token when it enters. We've got Midnight Reaper drawing cards when non-token creatures die at the cost of one life. We've got Judith pumping our creatures, and when a non-token creature we control dies, she deals one damage to any target which can quickly add up. Same with Mayhem Devil, dealing one damage to any target when a player sacrifices a permanent, which can also include treasure tokens for instance. We have Pitiless Plunderer, a 1-4 saying whenever another creature we control dies, create a treasure token. So you can kind of see the synergy with Mayhem Devil and just the ability to potentially ramp and use some activated abilities like getting back our various skeletons from our graveyard. We've got Black Market, a 5-man enchantment, saying whenever a creature dies put a charge counter on it, and at the beginning of our pre-combat main phase we add black mana to our mana pool for each charge counter on Black Market, which can also quickly add up. Then Spider Queen gets additional loyalty when a creature dies under our control, can make spider tokens and draw cards. We've got Open the Graves, making a 2-2 black zombie token whenever a non-token creature we control dies. Then there's Liliana Dreadhorde General, also drawing cards whenever a creature we control dies, can make a zombie token with the plus one, and make each player sacrifice two creatures with the minus four. And then finally the Meat Hook Massacre, a powerful sweeper, that can also deal incidental damage when our creatures die, and gain life when opposing creatures die as well. Then the next category are Act of Treason effects, starting out with the classic here. Three mana sorcery gain control of target creature until end of turn, untap that creature it gains haste until end of turn. So the idea is that we can steal an opposing creature and then use one of our sacrifice outlets, can be one of these or Hidetsugu himself, to potentially sacrifice that creature before returning it end of turn, so we can essentially kill it and get some value at the same time. Now we don't want to overdo it with these effects, because it does require a bit of setup, of course the opponent needs a creature in play that we can steal, and we also need to have a sacrifice outlet ready to go, which is not always easy to set up. So I'm not going overboard on these effects, but of course have to have the classic Act of Treason, just because the art is awesome, even though there are some slightly better versions out there, like Bloody Betrayal, which also makes a treasure token. We've got Price of Loyalty potentially pumping the creature if we used treasure tokens to cast it. Shackles of Treachery can destroy an equipment that's attached to the creature. And Traitor's Greed is 4 mana, but we get 2 mana back afterwards. And then at 1 mana there's also Claim the Firstborn to steal a creature with mana value 3 or less. And then we've got Angrath, you might have seen the recent Historic Brawl deck built around the discard ability. Can still make the opponent discard with the plus 1, but also has a nice Act of Treason effect with the minus 3. Then the next category are ramp cards, where we've got Dark Ritual, can be especially powerful if we're ramping into one of our planeswalkers. We've got a few two mana artifacts with Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol, and Mindstone. And then a Fable of the Mirror Breaker, also quickly becoming a staple in the red Brawl decks as a way to generate extra mana in the form of treasure tokens, thanks to the 2 2 Goblin we get on the first chapter, can let us loot away some cards on chapter 2, and eventually Reflection of Kiki Jiki also plays well as it can potentially copy one of our creatures that we can then also sacrifice. And then finally we've got Bolas Citadel as a very powerful card draw engine, especially if we have some scry effects in play, whether it's Hidetsugu or something like a Woestrider, which lets us sacrifice creatures to scry, so we can make sure we keep hitting spells on top of our deck that we can then play for free using life instead of mana. And then our mana base includes a few utility lands like Phyrexian Tower, which can also function as a sacrifice outlet, letting us sack a creature to add double black to our mana pool, so we can basically ramp for one, 
very important. And then a few creature lands like Hive of the Eye Tyrant, Den of the Bugbear, the new channel lands from Kamigawa, also staples in most Brawl decks, and Castle Lothwain as a card advantage, alongside Agadim's Awakening to potentially get back some creatures from our graveyard. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Oko, but not a 3-mana version at least. So I'm not exactly sure what to expect. But um, this hand seems a little sketchy. Two lands, no red mana. This is better. Still missing red mana, but at least we have two lands plus a ramp artifact. And then Merchant can make a treasure, which fixes for red. Henrika can draw as well. At least this Oko implies that our opponent's playing quite a few creatures we can maybe steal and sacrifice. Still missing our steal effects. Can level up Ranger class, hit us for three. I'll take it. And then I could play Henrika, make each player sacrifice. That seems fine. And Black Cat, probably the pick here as something cheap we don't mind sacrificing. Skyship Plunderer. Okay, so Henrika could draw now. And then we'll see if we pick up a mountain or not. Okay, so could go for Aberration. Could go for Hidetsugu plus... I guess that's it. Or we can go Merchant plus a 2-drop. Which also unlocks our vent mana for next turn. Seems a little bit better. And uh, Occultist maybe over Black Cat for now. Probably could have attacked for one, because with Ranger class the Plunderer is going to attack past Henrika anyway. Cultivator for ramp, so could see Oko next turn. Plunder grows itself. Spark harvest, nice answer. Okay then. What's next? I can spark harvest killing the plunder. Sacrificing Occultist or Black Cat. Kind of want to draw, so let's sacrifice Occultists. Can always sacrifice Black Cat to a Skullport Merchant or a Ghost Rider. Although that's still my only red mana at the moment. Yeah, tough call. Good play Hidetsugu. Or Black Cat, sacrifice it to the merchants to maybe draw a land right now, which we haven't played yet. Transform and hit for three. Now at least we have the option of stealing a creature and sacking to either Merchant or Ghost Rider. Simic Ascendancy, all right, we might see an alternate win condition. Already up to three counters. All right, there's our mountain. So, probably gonna steal something. And between Harishkar and Cultivator, I guess the Cultivator is a little bit bigger. So we can attack and either sacrifice to Skullport Merchants or to Ghost Rider here. 
Let's get the West Rider down. And don't need Swamp. Digging towards more active treason effects. Next turn might be time for Hidetsugu. Still haven't seen Oko in action. So it might be coming next turn. For now I could jump and sacrifice to Scry again, since we don't like our top card necessarily. Could also double block, honestly. Although let's see. Yeah, they can activate that at instant speed, so that would be a mistake. Village rights looks good. Can play it alongside a Grim Initiate. Can get a Predator down as an extra flying threat as well. Definitely have a few options. Opponent falls to 8. Could go Hidetsugu. Play Grim Initiates, keep up village rights without having to waste the treasure. And it seems fine. And then we can sacrifice the Initiates to the village rights after blocking if needed. Spark double copying Rishkar ignores the legendary rule. Alright, that's a couple more counters for the Ascendancy, but they need to get to 20, so they're still pretty far away. So, probably still fine to Village Rights. Can put an upkeep stop to maybe Scry 2 as well. Priest of Forgotten Gods is a good one. But let's do some math. If our opponent blocks my two largest creatures and I activate Guardian Idol, 5, 6, 7, I'm just one damage short. So yeah, I guess we'll dig towards an expensive spell maybe with Hidetsugu or an Act of Treason effect to put the game away. Right, we'll take our draw step. There we go. Steel Rishkar. Could have also played our own priest, given it haste with Act of Treason. Probably not as good as just stealing their creature. So now, if I attack with a team, they should be dead. Could have sent the Guardian Idol as well. Let damage happen. And there we go. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Facing Eliwick, green adventure deck. And yeah, we've got a fine hand. Can uh, maybe combine Act of Treason with a Deadly Dispute. Or we can get our commander down early to use that as a sacrifice outlet. So turn 3 Eliwick. Can ultimate pretty quickly. Could have gone for Reaver for a little bit of extra pressure, but... Could see myself going for a dispute on a cultist, and then we get to draw an extra card. Although maybe we just need the pressure from our creatures instead. One potential concern with going Reaver plus Specimen is that I might be unable to play Hidetsugu next turn. So maybe Reaver plus Temple is the way to go. Q 
keep a castle. So we won't be able to steal and sacrifice yet. But we can set it up on turn 5, even if Hidatsugu is dealt with. And Lenor Elves. Now, I guess never mind. If we steal Visionary, it can make mana to cast Deadly Dispute. Wouldn't be able to attack with it, but then we can attack with the rest. So that might be the play here. So this won't kill Eliwick, but still put a dent in it. And we'll keep the treasure for later. And then we still have a betrayal to combo with Hidetsugu. Elder Gargroth, certainly worth stealing. So currently it looks like it's gonna hit us at least once. Predator, a nice sacrifice outlet, still a mana short of using Betrayal and Predator. Predators may be safer than Hidetsugu in case of a fight effect. So well, let's try that. Probably no attacks on Eliwick. Or we could Betrayal, but then opponent gets to keep the Gergroth. That sounds like a bad idea. So we'll pass it back. Great Henge, that's scary. <laughs> Come on, hurry up. So Eliwick completes a dungeon. So now her ultimate can give plus two plus two in addition to Trample and Haste. Sereth. Yeah, that protects Gergroth. So now we're forced to steal Sereth first. Opponent's going off with the Great Henge. Gargroth attacking is a little surprising, because now we can potentially trade off. Although, let's see. Untapped creatures have Hexproof, so yeah, there's no Death Touch to worry about here. So I can block Predator alongside Cultists, Reaver, and let's say Specimen. And then I can sacrifice either Specimen or the 1-1 one -one to grow Predator, make it indestructible. So... This seems fine, or I can sack the 1-1 one, one token, and then I get to keep Reaver. Alright. Got a flyer to kill Eliwick, and we've got the Betrayal for Sereth. And I could play Hidetsugu as well. Sure. That goes after Alleywick, that can go face. And the rest stays back. Now we're still facing a Great Henge, so that's going to be an uphill battle, but uh, we'll try our best. Upkeep, we could maybe sacrifice a creature to Scry to set up the second ability. And Monogreen's going to struggle to destroy the Predator. Bone going to search up a creature. What's that going to be? Ulamonk the Ceaseless Hunger. Well, that answers Immerstorm Predator. Battle Mammoth as well. 
So how close is the opponent to casting Ulamog? 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 now, 14 with the treasure. So yeah, Ulamog is happening. Don't think we have any discard effects we can hope to find. So we seem pretty dead. Sacrifice Occultists in the hopes of finding something useful. Bash and Dark Ritual, those don't help. Might have to scry again. Bottom, bottom. And uh, not sure what I'm hoping to find with Hidetsugu here. But let's give it a shot. Just a land. Alright. GG's. Yeah, Great Henge is one of those cards that is a must answer. Otherwise, the opponent's gonna run away with the game. Angrath, I guess, could be fun at uh, stealing Olamog, but we're not gonna deck the opponent in a 100 card format. So, both creatures exiled. I guess I should have sacked Predator to Hidetsugu. So, we could have uh, scryed here. But yeah, this game's pretty much over. But I'm not gonna give up without getting at least an attack in with Ulamog. Never seen water burn? You will. Your crew for my freedom? <laughs> a fair price. Maybe with a fling effect we could have gotten there. Almost, at least. Opponent gets their Ulamog back. And that's game. Alright. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, facing Captain Ripley Vance, 3-2, and if they cast their third spell, cool stuff happens. So, do we have a Keeper? Yeah, probably. Fable potentially subs up uh, turn 4, Angrath. Looks like a standard opening hand, almost. Doom the center gives us some more sacrifice fodder. So can expect a lot of cheap cantrip effects to chain together to leverage Captain. Hopefully we get to make a treasure here. Could have also kept up rights in the hopes of just drawing into a land if they try and kill Doom the Center. But we still get the second chapter as well. And it's interesting what to get rid of here. Probably Black Market might be a little too cute. And could see an argument for Bolas the Citadel, although it is going to be powerful once we get it down. Spider Queen, let's see. Yeah, I guess Spider Queen can be taken out pretty easily by the Captain with its ability. So maybe we'll uh, get rid of that one too and then keep Citadels or Card Draw Engine instead. Alright, lands are good. So... Can attack with my Shaman. And then we have a couple of options on how to proceed. Could just play a Meat Hook Massacre for two, wipe the board, and then potentially be able to play a Bolas of Citadel next turn. Yeah, kind of like that idea. Now, 
there's also an argument for village rights instead. But I don't think I want to let them untap with Magda and Captain. Opponent's got Rage to save the Captain. Fair enough. Still take care of Ornithopter and Magda. And I think we still hang on to the treasure token here. That way I can at the very least play Angrath next turn. Captain attacks. I mean, I could block... And if they play three spells or a pump spell, I can still village rights, and then we're likely to draw land with it to play Angrath to answer Captain, and it wastes a bunch of mana. Sudden breakthrough. That works. Rankle could also sacrifice itself. Not really the ideal solution. So Angrath probably still going to be the play. Phyrexian Tower is also an interesting land. Might be worth playing now. Could have played Bolas a Citadel with Phyrexian Tower by sacrificing Reflection. But this also feels pretty good. And then Citadel's gonna be more effective if we haven't played a land for the turn yet. <laughs> Alright, and our opponent has seen enough. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Can sequence. Shambler into Soul Ripper, and then maybe play a Hobbling Zombie, turn three alongside a tap land. Facing Gigantha the Wellspring, so some sort of five color deck. I'm not sure what flavor. Could be shrines, could be good stuff. So, could also play a Skullport Merchant which can together crew the Soul Ripper, still sack the Shambler if we want. I think I'm fine with uh, Hobbling Zombie instead. And then we'll crew. Probably just gonna deal five. Not sack anything yet. And an Act of Treason seems good to have at least one. Even if the opponent might not be playing a whole lot of creatures. Arcane Signet. And an Alsaid. Alright, so that does point towards an Enchantment Shrine deck potentially. Act of Treason on the Alsaid lets us sacrifice it to its own ability if we want, or we can sack it to the Soul Ripper. Don't really expect a ton of creatures, but they might have some card draw engines. The problem there is that if they have Alsaid for protection, Act of Treason's not necessarily going to work out anyway. So it could be fine to run it out now, could play Hidetsugu instead, or go for Merchant to potentially play a Liliana if we draw land. I think Merchant has the highest upside. And then we'll crew. And then probably okay to sacrifice Shambler. Leave behind a squirrel token. It's gonna be a Feldar retreat plus a land. Hopefully not a fetch land. Right. So they get one token, but they are tapped out. Ooh, and a dark ritual lets me cast Liliana. Four, five, six, seven. Yeah, not enough for anything else. But um, if we play Liliana, we can minus to make them sack both creatures if we want. And then we'll sacrifice a squirrel and I guess a hobbling zombie. Here. 
could have gone for slightly more damage by uh, sacking the merchant and attacking with the hobbling zombie instead. And here, probably okay to sack the zombie, draw a card with Liliana, grow the Soul Ripper, and take it from there. Still have our Act of Treason available. Alright, sweet. Alright, we're on the draw, facing an Angrath Flame Chains deck. So it could be a discard heavy deck, could also be a sacrifice deck. So if we have a sacrifice outlet in play, we can maybe sacrifice whatever they try and steal with Angrath, so that could still work out in our favor. And this hand seems acceptable. Play initiates. Could Dark Ritual out Hidetsugu next turn. Yeah, Waste Knots pointing towards a discard deck. So could play Hidetsugu or play Predator. Predator certainly a safer investment in the face of removal. So let's go with Predator. And then next turn I could still play Hidetsugu thanks to Phyrexian Tower. Inquisition takes West Rider and makes a 2-2 token. Alright, so we can play Hidetsugu. And attack. Unlikely that I want to sacrifice a zombie token since it's important to keep protection for Predator. Fell Spectre makes me discard. They can have a Blood Crypt. Makes two mana with Waste Knot. At least Fable Passage puts an extra card in Graveyard for Woestrider, so I'll hang on to it. Virus Beetle makes us discard again. Two more damage. Two more mana. And we get to hang on to our land here. So no sacrifice. Karizef, not a bad draw. So Predator attacks. Play Karizef. And pass it back. Then we'll be empty handed, so reduces the effectiveness of their discard effects. No need to exile anything to get to counter. Wanna keep cards in graveyard for Strider. Now we could also escape Strider by using Phyrexian Tower, but it's better to be empty handed. And then I'll probably hang on to Fabled Passage until I need it, in case we draw Mayhem Devil, could represent one more damage. Although, I also have to be careful with this Cry that we don't mess that up by fetching afterwards. Pyromancer will draw an extra card after discarding Fable of the Mirror Breaker. So the ground is stalled, but this uh, turn to Predators, putting in some good work. So do I fetch? No, I don't think so. Feed this form can go after Waste Knot, although at this point I don't know if it matters anymore. So what can we do? Could, for instance, kill a Seasoned Pyromancer. Second attack with Karizev. Sacrifice Ragavan. I will need to fetch another Swamp for that to work. I guess killing the zombie might be slightly better. And then keep black mana available. Could attack with Hidetsugu as well. And then if they triple block, so be it. Sure. All 
Right, opponent goes for the trade. Second so sacrifice the 1-1 one, one zombie to scry 2. And then I'm fine with the trade here. Priest and Solemn. Priest is going to be a little slow to activate, but I don't mind Solemn. Can even activate Hidetsuku in my upkeep to deal 4 damage. Pass it back. Angrath could steal Karizev, but then I can sack it to my Frexen Tower in response. And yeah, upkeep Hidetsugu to close out the game would be fun. And there we go. Alright, that worked out nicely. Yeah, Dark Ritual, powerful card. Gave us a nice early start. And that also mitigated the effectiveness of the discard deck, being able to empty your hand quickly. So yeah, overall this red-black sacrifice deck is definitely not among the more powerful historic brawl decks I've featured recently, so if you want to pick it up don't expect it to be a high win rate deck necessarily. You could potentially replace Hidetsugu as commander with a different card, like Angrath for instance would be okay, or you could go mono black with a card like Ayara as commander, although then you do lose the act of treason angle of the deck, but maybe that's still better for the overall consistency. So yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.